beginning of the, I think, uh, I don't know, I'll be, I'll be jumping around. So we'll let somebody start it off and then I'll pick you up. Go ahead, I need someone to start it up. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. What jumped out to me was his reasoning behind the gift, and mm-hmm. that even you know, his followers didn't understand that. But when he reminded them that you know you didn't come, you weren't following us all to get the material gain mm-hmm. out of it, yeah. and they realized just how heavy that was, and it brought a lot of them to tears. Like you're right, you know we we have our reward. You know it, it, for those other people, they were in it solely for the material gain and yet would that help them with their faith you know a lot a lot loud and a lot else but i think just him reminding his followers like you know we're, we're following you have to be reminded why you're in it and you know, i think that really set out prophet muhammad's generosity is to confirm that it was all about bringing people to Allah. Mm-hmm. And I think that as time went on, this is what really touched the hearts of even those who initially went after doing the, you know, the, the things. That, the and I think one of the things that really strikes me about this chapter is the fact that these were former enemies. And it says old foes, right? These are people who never would have expected the Prophet to treat them in a nice way even. To ever have expected that the Prophet would give them something that was of value after what they had done to him prior. Not just him, but so many of the companions, and I know you know a lot of their names. We we have to remember that one of the best things and one of the things that allows a person's heart to open up is this act of generosity. Even a smile, which is charity, okay? Even a smile, I've seen so many people that just look at me like this and I smile at them, they have no choice but to smile back because it's the South. They have to fake it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so they fake it and then after that, oh, how, my name, and they introduce themselves. All of a sudden, they're willing to talk to me. And that's a beauty. And there's one of the things that struck me about Prophet Muhammad. Well, even yeah. in the beginning, when the brother was saying about the generosity, even uh, in the beginning of the chapter, when he, when he released the the, uh, the, when, when he, the way he did to release the slaves, how uh, how different, how he did it, how mm-hmm. political he was on on getting by when he said that I give my share, and how and you know. But even, he chose not to do it in secret this right, time. Right, he brought it in, up, in the prior chapters. He, he did it in, in secret, where he in, said whatever was not was mine is now given back. Right. He, right, and then he the way he, he even, did it out public. And even when the brother said that he didn't want to do it, he didn't want to do it. He wanted to keep his. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he was not saying that he was a bad Muslim. He but stayed he, quiet and right, gave him his rights. Right. He he, uh, he could have said no, you gotta do it. But he didn't. He 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 let he went all the way through the whole sequence of it. And then they uh they weren't bad Muslims, but it was the way that they were doing did things in that time. But he, and he went the extra mile of replacing whatever exactly. they were losing with even more six than what they of, had at yeah, that six, moment. Six years of the first forms of the war that we gained. Yes, and right. this is this is not only was he being a great example by being the, the first to him. say whatever was my share is now given back. Exactly. And he told the guy, ask me after the congregational prayer is over, outwardly ask me. Yes. So he could answer it outwardly so that his example could be listened to by all of the people in the masjid and all of the people who were not just the leaders of the people, but the followers of the people. The tribe themselves were saying, we're not going with our leader, we disagree with him. Whatever was ours is the prophet, and whatever his share was, he was giving back. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it all went back. And then he went the extra mile and said whatever the six uh, shares of and all of this. And then also the other lesson. There's another lesson in this. What, what this, do you think I, I'm I was about, about to say before moving forward, one of the things that has touched me throughout my reading of this book mm-hmm. is... I look at how Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, dealt with disbelievers. Mm-hmm. And I think in 2014, that's something that as Muslims we need to really pay close attention yes. to. Because some of us can be very harsh. Some of us have forgotten that we were those same people. Mm-hmm. And it's a reminder, you know, Quran says, refers to Bani Adam. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, we're all, all related. We're all related. Oh, yeah. These were his relatives. 
and etc. But mm -hmm. the thing I noticed is just how he allowed, even when it came to the people saying destroy these folks, he said, well, maybe their offspring will come through. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. Mm -hmm. that, that is, that's but what the, me. That's, that's extremely potent. And it's also what I've always really focused on and tried to draw a lot of attention to is the fact that he was our example for all time. And when he did things in private, like spending the night in prayer, Okay, this was something he did in private for himself, for his Lord. And he did this where he wasn't showing everybody to do it. They knew about it, but they didn't, he, he wasn't in the masjid doing this to where everybody felt obligated to follow him. But when he needed them to understand that it was their right or if he was showing an example that needed to be learned, it was done publicly. Um, also, the, what he put on himself was not always what he put on the people. He allowed, and this is another lesson. We should, if we're willing to do that, doesn't mean I have to force that on my kids or my husband or my wife or whatever. It means we have to do what we feel necessary. And if they see us and they like to do the same thing, we encourage it, but we don't force it. You know. Um, also, the act of being public in his generosity is also a lesson for other people mm -hmm. nowadays because when we have fundraising and things like this, everybody's like, Anonymous, 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 $50,000 anonymous. How are you going to keep that anonymous? How you don't allow the people to see that this was a generous action, and maybe it inspires the rest of the people around you, those who love you and are constantly competing with you and other things, they should compete for the love of Allah the most, right? So those things don't, we don't have to be private in all of the areas of our um charities or even in our in our goodwill and our actions because if I'm going and feeding the hungry I'm one person but if I tell a bunch of friends that that's what I do and they all join me that's 40 people how many more people are being served but you know you can, in, in some instances in our society you can understand those who do definitely that. because some people oh you're just doing that because you got a lot of money oh, yeah. and that's more reward for that person because anyone yeah. who's putting on you what's not <laughs> true you receive reward for that, and they take their sin. You I'm know. not worried about somebody but, else talking about it about me. I'm worried about my own intention. That, that you know, is somewhere in my heart. Yeah. I'm kind of happy they think I'm such a great person, yeah. even though it wasn't my intention. You want to keep your intentions pure, yeah. 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 Okay, what about the... Yeah, go ahead. Another issue, which is um, the concept of justice, um, I think is, is, is very interesting here, because so the Prophet um, he gave a lot to, to a small group of people, um, yes. but, and he did not give to the others. So, so the concept of justice is not equal in everything. Exactly. It, it's, it's a much more concept. Uh, it's a much more complex concept that, that we have to keep in mind. And I, I really would say they were, we don't know about them if they are good or bad people or stuff like that. They were just new to Islam. And they- It opens uh, the heart. And, and yeah, and, and it, it's, it's a, um, one way to bring them deeper into this time. Or to love you, because when yeah. you do something for somebody, their connection to you is going to be a little bit stronger and a little bit more bonded, you know. Um, and that's one of the things that I do with new Muslims when uh, we have new Muslims that enter Islam, and that's why I ask for the brother invo brother's involvement and stuff, because each of us need to be able to build a bond with somebody mm -hmm. else so that we can continue growing stronger and have that support system. Well, this is the same thing. And Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was building a bond with them so that when the Ansar and the Muhajirin loved him regardless what was going on. They supported him no matter what was going on. They came to him when he had nothing. When he didn't even, when he was running, in other words. He didn't even have status at that time. And they were still with him because he was the Prophet of Allah. Not for any other reason. Now you're past that mark. You're past that point of you no know, sincere yeah. love, and it's real and pure, and there's nothing going to interfere between you. At this point, you've got you've started gaining status. You've started gaining spoils. You've started gaining um, what do you call it? Um, achievements and and you know higher quality of living. Everything is better. Though the Prophet Muhammad still lived very humbly and 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 simply. But what the people were like, that's the best companion. To everybody thought they were the best companion, right? 
because he, he interacted with each one individually with that technique. He didn't, he didn't say, Abu Bakr is my favorite. It's implied, but he didn't say it, you know? <laughs> but all of them said, no, I'm his favorite. I'm his favorite. They all felt that because the way he interacted with them was so beautiful and, and pure. It was not a, um, well, if you do this, then I'll do that. It wasn't a give and take type relationship. It was all giving. And they took and they took and they took and they supported on the other side. They didn't, what can they give back to him except support, honestly. Um, but it's, one, one thing I want to say here, when the people, because we are human beings, just like the Ansar and Muhajirin, where you have forgotten us who did so much with you and we supported you and we were there through the thick and the thin and we went through so much and you forgot us? We're human beings. We will feel that sometimes. Mm -hmm. What this lesson teaches is I don't have to remember you. Allah remembers you. And I didn't need to forget you because what you did gained more than what anybody else will ever get in this life. Yeah. The people of Badr, the people who went to Badr, were forgiven for their sins of the past and the future. You what more do you want that. from like, that? You feel most surprised <laughs> you know? by that. I thought you understood this. Yeah, like, yeah. The, don't we, we were clear. weren't we on the right page? You yeah. know, come on, remember, this is, you have a status with Allah that no one is comparable to. But it's a reminder for us. It is a reminder. We have to be reminded even in a daily. And to look daily ourselves. Daily and to look yeah. ourselves at what we are thinking. Because sometimes we get in our own heads and it's a dangerous place to be. And I always tell everybody, if you're in your head, get out. It's dangerous. <laughs> Flashing sign, danger, danger. Get out of your head. because Just because the person didn't recognize you publicly. I mean, I was watching... Uh, what was it, uh, The View, and this woman was up there saying, I was on the academies, and I went to the restroom prior to the show, and you know, I, I was up there and I introduced people and everything, but I didn't recognize um, Versace in the back, and he made me go in the bathroom and take off the dress and the shoes and the necklace and the purse and everything, because I didn't recognize him when he passed me in the hallway. So I went out and I got, who was it, um, somebody else, a different, I don't even care about design. But I, I put on, no, it was Versace that she changed into, and the other one was, um, another one. The but jerk. anyway. It, the jerk, we'll call it the, the jerk. One, we'll call the jerk. But his arrogance was so strong that how come you didn't recognize me? Take everything that you're wearing of mine off. Well, you better have a gun. And she said, and then I went out there in the, in the other one, and I thanked him right away. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's something that we ourselves should not be seeking public recognition. We should be seeking the recognition of Allah. And we should be pleased with our action and our sincerity and, and keeping that pure. If somebody recognizes me, I get nervous. I really do. I'm like, oh, don't, don't say things. You know, and I get shy and I turn redder than I usually am. And I, you know, I turn, I get really nervous and, and upset about that because I, then at that point I start to worry, where is my arrogance going to go? You know, I have an ego, everyone does. A lot of the celebrities, if you listen to them, they hate their public life because they, they don't have them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like if you and I make a mistake, it's like nobody knows, but if you're very, 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 very popular, you have everybody knows the mistake you made. No. Right. And so a lot of them, <laughs> They're not yeah. happy at all. Right? And, and, right. and then, you know, it was, he gave those were the people from Quraysh where he didn't go back with them. They went to home. The only thing they have as a souvenir from the Prophet are, 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 the, are, are the gifts. Right. Whereas the others, he's going yeah. with them. So, yeah. so they, they, they did get a better deal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't uh, this the part where he tells them he will most definitely go back with them? And was it right. this chapter? They were worried that he was going to stay in Mecca. Yeah. Right. I mean, that would have made sense to a lot of people that he would go back and... But he thought that because that was his no. people and he yeah. wanted to yeah. see It's on right. page 671, and it says, Now that God has given my messen his messenger his own land and his own city, do you think that he will settle here? And this is from the Muhajirin and the, the Ansar. At that moment, the Prophet ﷺ was praying to God at the top of the hill of al Um when he had finished his prayers, he asked the Ansar what they had said. Because, you know, you're praying, but you still hear things, and 
doesn't sound right. So you, you catch it, right? Somebody's talking about um, At first, they would not tell him when he insisted they express their fears that far be it from me that he may stay in Mecca. Now he's got his people, they all accept him now, so will he stay here? And he says, far be it from me, my life is with you, and my death will be among you. So this is the gift of personal interaction and example. When you're being trained on a job, okay, and your boss, who's the CEO, okay, he's training you, He's doing step by step by step, or he trains somebody who 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 trains somebody, and all along this chain, there's steps being left out. You're not getting the same quality of training with the chain as you are from the CEO who wants it done this way. And you're going to prosper if you do it this way. But if you do it this way through all the chain, you're missing like major important things, right? This is what Prophet Muhammad gave to the Muhajirin and the Ansar. This is what, and even when one of the people said, I want to accept Islam, my brother wants to accept Islam and he wants to make uh, hijra to Medina. He said, that time is over. Mm -hmm. Remember I made mention of that? Like, it gives me goosebumps. I miss it. Yeah. I that reward is not for any of them yeah. anymore. What's interesting you know? too is when, when I was brought to his attention of the dissension between the Ansar and it, what's interesting to me is he reflected back on Musa, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, "Man, you know, he faced even greater." Yes. And I, I think again, it's it's, it's 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 a beautiful thing to show that he even went back mm -hmm. to lessons from the past of other yeah, lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because Which he went through even more. Um, six, six, seven. It's like the last sentence. There's a Bukhari, uh, maybe you know, the page where you're talking about right. 71 about the yes, yeah. And yeah, I was going to read that. Yeah. I, I had it all ready to read. I thought you did. Um, Al Bukhari relates on the authority of Amr ibn Thabalib. Th Th uh, the Prophet made large gifts to some people while denying others. Some of them felt aggrieved. He said, I give out gifts to certain people because I fear that they may be shaken. Others I trust to what God has placed in their hearts of goodness and riches. Among the latter is Amr ibn Thabalib. Amr comments, I would not exchange the prophet's statement for the world. To feel that strongly about a statement and to know your your quality of your actions has been recognized by the Prophet Muhammad by Allah and to know it don't you know we pray and we say inshallah Allah will accept my prayer and yes Allah will accept my prayer because I'm praying okay we're still wondering did I do it right did I get all of it right did I did I forget something I wasn't paying I didn't have total concentration you start wondering what all did you were you deficient in but to be told you have no deficiency with Allah or with his prophet. How blessed is this person? And how much do, how could they ever want a materialistic thing after that? Doesn't mean we shouldn't drive a nice car if we can afford it. Doesn't mean we shouldn't buy nice clothes because we can afford it. Doesn't mean any of that. Even to allow yourself luxuries of life is not wrong. But to make sure that your emphasis is on the quality of your actions and the goodness that you do, there's your gift and there's your security in life. Because you're not secure in life any other way. Without, and all of the people who are still searching, and even Muslims who don't get it, okay? I've, I've known lifelong Muslims that just don't get it. My husband was referring to people, women who will go out with all this makeup and all of this stuff. I don't have the need to show my beauty to other people so they can tell me how beautiful I am. I'm not stupid. You know, I don't need this self, I don't need this acceptance of other people. I accept who, what I look like. My husband tells me I'm the most beautiful. Lying, not lying, I don't care as long as I'm <laughs> you know? As long as, as, long as my husband looks at me and is convincing Probably. through his words, we're good. You know, you tell me I'm not all that, I'm good. 
can handle it. <laughs> we don't, we don't, you know, we can accept our situation because that's what Allah has given us. And to be able to accept that takes effort. It is not a simple just, okay, God gave me this, so I handle it. No. And it's also, remember the two people who died in the tornado just recently in Kimberley, I believe. Um, they chose not to go to the shelter. What have I said a million times over? Don't stand on the train tracks while a train is coming and say, inshallah, it won't hit me. You run, you protect yourself, you make action to keep yourself safe, right? They chose not to go to the shelter, though they were, they were tell told by the police to go to the shelter. No, we'll ride it out. They died. There's no choice for us in those ways. If we're given a test, we don't wait for it to just be over. We make effort to make it better. We make effort to survive it. We make effort to make it a better life afterward. You can't be passive in your life. If you're passive in your life, you fail. You fail. You have to be aggressive. You have to go after what you know is right, what is true, and you must act on it. You cannot wait till tomorrow because you're not promised tomorrow. You're promised right now. Now, not even the next breath. Right now. Yes, the other thing that we need to remember is that <laughs> yes. the function of everything in life that we have, whether luxury or whatever, and the people that we love, the function of all of that should be to bring us closer. To yes. Allah. It's, uh, so um, so those were already close to Allah. They did not need those things. Right. Others needed those things to get them closer to Allah. Tony, can you close that to the Thank you. That's exactly correct. And that's what the hadith is referring to, that some of you didn't need this enticement. Some of you didn't need to be open because you were already there. And also those same people, even among the Muhajirin and the Ansar, you did have a few that were not... Um, completely <coughs> accepting the situation. That's their life. You know, you, we're not all going to be the same person and perfect in acceptance and all of this. That's sometimes our struggle, our test. And that's our job to make effort to clear that away from our hearts. And the beauty mm -hmm. is once they were reminded, even those of the yeah. other sides of the once they were reminded, they stepped right back in place. And they were, he and he says clearly, I would not change, exchange the prophet's statement for the world. <coughs> if I could get that promise from the prophet Muhammad what would I do? What would I do? <laughs> you can look Imagine. At, so the thing you can look at how the people when he uh, when he did these gifts, how how it turned their heart. Like when these do not do make such a gift willingly. Yes. You know, was talking about that how it changed their heart. I mean, they might have been kind of I'm accepting this because. It's what's going on now, but it took something to see uh, his gratitude and how truly you are God's messenger. Yes. You know, uh, you, you didn't care. But then the other king would probably not give him anything. Right. Everybody's selfish and keep it, but he was given. <laughs> yes, he was given it. It, 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 didn't, it didn't matter to the prophet. It, you know, the wealth wasn't that important to him because he knew what was greater. And, and, the, the, and the wisdom in the prophet's actions we can see it now, but the people at that time were not completely focused on that. They were just, because that was the that was the culture at the time to, whoever got the most meant that they worked the hardest. They were the most recognized because they were the, the most, doing the most action. So it was a prestige type thing. Sure. And they were proud of the spoils they took from wars and, and different um, endeavors or whatever. They, when they were rewarded, it meant that they did the most. So here I am. And they would be proud. So not always are they looking at the right thing behind the action. But when the Prophet put the nail on the head, or the, hit the nail on the head, immediately they saw it. There's no question. And they backed up. Doesn't mean that they, they weren't looking forward to that six shares and you know whatever they were still looking forward to the, the reward they were happy with the with the decision at that point but to give a little to get so much more this is a huge lesson it's a huge blessing this, 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 this chapter was uh i love this chapter, chapter. i, mean, I told her read it it's time. good <laughs> oh no I read this lot one. Time, but this chapter was this really the chapter it. It brought forth yeah, a lot of stuff it. and um you know even with how he did it politically, how yes. he handled it, and even with his gratitude and, and how he felt about 
uh, about riches and stuff like that. It, it yeah. brought a lot out. It was short, but it brought a lot. But it's an issue to us. Out. Yeah. It's an issue to us that different people need different things. So as we as we have a relationship with other people, some of them like to have a gift. You know, very much like what you were talking it's about. The love, marriage, you know, yes. The, the, the marriage. That's what I'm trying to relate it to. It, it's a, like some of us want want that thing. You mm -hmm. do want to give it to them. And some of us don't need that. They need something else. So yeah. give that to something else. But it yeah. also shows, and, and I, just hearing you talk about it, it relates even in our society. Like a lot of people in our society have a misconception that because the people who have a lot work the hardest. Some of the people who have a lot didn't work at all. Right. Could have inherited it. And then some of the people who are working their tails off have very little. So and it's a reminder of a lot of mercy. Yes. And that's that's one of the things I really wanted to bring up too. Thank you very much, Brother Nadir. It's important to realize that yes, there's lots of here that we say. Um, when we are in a station in life, we shouldn't look at the people who have more than us. We should be looking at the people who have less than us so we can be grateful for what we have. We don't look at the one who's... That's in my face. Okay. As long as there's not a brawl going on, we're okay. But if we look at the people who have more than us, we will always be wanting more and we'll never be satisfied with what we have. But if we look at the people who have less than us, we will be thankful, grateful, and satisfied. And yes, you don't just stay happy with what you have. Be happy with what you have and endeavor to get more. There's nothing wrong with that either. Yes. That's a misconception in America, you know, this uh, idea. When we become this, Muslim, like, we all think we have to be humble and, and this religious idea. Oh, yes, that, and yeah. don't, don't wear gold and don't do this and don't drive a BMW. Oh, my God. Somebody, drive the, the Honda nothing. I heard a waving with Tom. We used to have this little tiny, yeah. like, hatchback. We, when I was growing up, so we had this. It was like a hatchback. It looked like a bug, but it wasn't a bug. It was a Honda somehow, and my sister used to call it by a really bad name. Your mom. Um, <laughs> it was brown in color. Um, and so we, we, you know, we, but we were happy to be in that car because we didn't have to walk, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I heard somebody one time. Uh, you know, comment on like there's a, a sister wearing these what had to be like thousand dollar shoes, and she recognized them. And I'm thinking, but my my response was, I really think that she and her husband they can afford it. So I mean, not if you want to. And you know, maybe they gave fifty thousand dollars to the school this year. You don't know. I think she or could take the shoes. You don't want to talk about no shoes. But this is the thing. I don't. You know, in, in, and and this is where I go with that. With that statement. Yes, you can afford the coach purses. You can afford the shoes. You can afford the glasses. You can afford the gold. You can afford your beautiful new annually new car and all of this. But make sure that when you're donating, you're not holding on. No. Make sure that when you're donating, you're not thinking, I have to pay my lease next month. You wouldn't have, this money is not yours. This money is Allah, that belongs to Allah, and you should use it properly. Yes, you can use it on those things. Luxury is fine. But make sure that when, it, when you have an offer of giving, and I'm telling you this in this way, I am giving you the opportunity to donate. It's not, I want your money. I'm giving you an opportunity to donate means that your reward will be so much more. Yes, buy those beautiful things and do all of that. But in the fundraising dinners, the first thing I say is don't buy the post purse this month. Towards the, the donation. Hold off on the post purse this month. Imagine yourself just paying, I mean, one trip to the mall for some of the ladies and the brothers in the community is over a thousand dollars a month. A, a trip, a trip, and they may go several times a week. Okay, so save that one day and spend the other days. It's okay. That's their business, is my point. You know, you, know, you don't but really need absolutely. To get in it. But yeah. I encourage yeah. that they think of it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, as for saying yes, that, yes, it is their don't... business, and it's yeah. not our job to say what they yeah, should what or should shouldn't should be, wearing be wearing or whatever. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for us all, but especially the Muslims, is for all of us. Let me say all of us. Yes. Working on self is a full time job. Oh, yeah. And I think part of the else. problem with humanity <laughs> is everybody's so busy trying to tell other people what they yes. should and should not be doing yes. instead of perfecting self. Mm -hmm. Now, we used to say in martial arts, 
that in Kumite and fighting your enemy is not that person standing outside of you. Your right. enemy is your feel within. Right. Your doubt within. All of those things. So you got to perfect self, man. But yes. most people are so busy looking at what you're wearing and what you're doing. Say it. Get it out. Grasshopper. Yeah. 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 My favorite she show when I was a kid. I'm sorry. It's my absolute favorite show when I was a kid. I got something. You take the pebble from my hand. <laughs> I was like five, so like, Kung Fu is going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, 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 I agree with you 100%. We should be working on ourselves daily and we should make an effort on a regular basis throughout the day, even to perfect our intentions behind our actions as well. Um, chapter 38 is going to be our next 37. chapter. 37. 38. Um, 38 is our next chapter, and we will be. It's uh, pretty short. Pretty short. short. Yeah. And uh, for all who are interested, um, the book is now available on e Oh, cool. Yeah. And I just spent like $300 on you, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the book in my hand. It's $22 on the Nook app. Okay, 28 so. in hand. I mean, it's just, you know, yeah, if you great. like to read discreetly. I, I'm happy you said that. Discreetly. Discreetly? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, my son had this at the airport, and I'm like, you know, it's like, don't let the people at the counter see. <laughs> I, I will be showing mine off as I'm reading my book. Well, my, my I thing have, is, I love to show the people like, what are you reading? I'm like, oh, this is. Why don't you get past security? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you carry your bag. 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 I'm happy you mentioned that because I didn't even look at that. Yeah. But um, I, we need to discuss really quick before everybody goes out the door. Yeah. Um, the summer courses, the summer classes, I, sh I really have a hard time during the summer because my children are home. It's a, it's a time for my family. And I'm going out of the going. country, so I can't, yeah. So it's going to be hard during the summer. The thing that I am offering again this year is the weekly ifars at my house for Ramadan, where we all do a potluck and come and eat at my house, and we'll pray the Torah with prayers, and this is one of the uh, contingencies. Must be there for at least two or four rakah per week. Because this is a beautiful reward, and it's the Tarawih prayers, the voluntary prayers after Aisha prayer, is they are the best of the prayers for the whole year, and they're especially limited to Ramadan. They're not throughout the year. This is specifically done for Ramadan. So we, I really want us to do that. We'll have a small halakha like we did before, where we did small little um, like topics, but they were short lessons. Um, I really enjoyed having everybody at my house that last Ramadan. It was really wonderful to have everyone there and just interact with each other on a more social occasion. But at the same time, we were benefiting from each other with the prayer and with the halakha as well as getting to know one another. Um, I am trying really hard to arrange a trip to Six Flags and if I can get the tickets free, all we have to worry about is um, gas and carpooling and food while we're there, probably. I unfortunately have a really hard time doing any other type of a trip because that means I can't take my kids with me and I can't, you know, then I can fight no. Um, we need, if we're going to do an out of town thing, and plus because I'm a female, I have to make sure that I have one of my, you know, uh, makrams with me. Um, and so we, I'm, tr I'm working on it, no guarantees yet. Okay, summertime after Ramadan, probably we will not have classes for the remainder of the summer unless I come back and say we're going to continue. Okay, before Ramadan, before Ramadan we continue. Continue to come until you're told otherwise. Yes, <laughs> go get that. Class I know where all of you live. Classes. I know where you all live, or yeah. I can find you. Yeah, we'll get you in Ramadan because um, <laughs> I know you show up for the food. <laughs> But we do, we will be having um, on the Eid, like we did the IHOP last time, inshallah, we'll, we'll be doing that again, inshallah. Um, it will probably not be the day of Eid because that's the day I spend with my family. If anybody wanted to join us, you're more than welcome, but I've got to do my family time with my family. Um, but one of the following Sundays or whatever, we will probably all be meeting for breakfast or something to share the 
occasionally shot. We don't have any really new Muslims in here today. Not today, today. No, so uh, it's going to be more of an issue for those guys that we're not having a class, and that worries me. So if you have some kind of solution to this, if somebody can offer us. for someone to spend the night at their house for that one evening or something, and it's you know all the brothers are probably out on this one because it's all women, I think. This but, is where we um, really miss Brother Khalil because he yes. took over the summertime stuff. He had the ability. He to, kept it going with lots but, of different activity. Yeah. Um, but if we can try to offer someone to stay with us through just the one evening of that week, so that they won't have to drive back late at night so far from uh, if Birmingham. Come, if they come to break fast in the evening time, we'll still have that unity. We can just promote that and push everybody to try to come. If, if they can make it in the evening. If they can make it, but even if they can say, within that week, you know, hopefully they can make it at least one day. Yes. And then we can try to group up and talk a little bit. That's and just keep it going. Just group up a little bit. Good. Before we before we go in and make the prayer, we Perfect. can just, or after the prayer, when everybody, when everybody's playing, we can group up a few seconds and talk. And yes. Just, you know, just to keep it tight. Yes. I agree with you. And I hope that we can we can all encourage yeah. each other to, to work on that. I don't want to see anybody lost out and then they're out of the habit of coming to class and so they quit coming. Um, the core of our class has changed many times over. The beginning of my class when I first started were three or four sisters. Then it included a couple of brothers, none of whom are still in our class. Either they graduate themselves out or they become um, busy with different uh, schedules and things like that. I'm okay with the constantly changing core of our class because that's what new Muslims classes are about is when and I like I said I'll hang on to you as long as I feel like you need that support the minute you start pulling back I'm gonna let go with a sticker on your back that says don't mess with my peeps <laughs> you know the one that says kick me I said don't mess with my people um, but I have to give you your space when you start pulling back from me. And if you if you need me to chase you, you better keep chasing me. That's how I feel about that. Mm -hmm. I, I read your signals as far as what you need from me. What about and, uh, Do you have a question? I'm not. It's just like one, one thing. Okay. After we should say. But are we at prayers? Mm -hmm. But are we at prayers? Our Sunnah prayers are prayed uh, in two, 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 two. Yeah. And usually they read one third of the, not one third, no, one, uh, one part. part of the Quran each night. And this is throughout Ramadan, you'll find this mes masjid and the Homewood masjid for sure. And maybe the West Side masjid, I'm not quite sure anymore. Is it the West Side? They also have Parawek prayers that they will finish the whole part of the Quran in that prayer. Um, and it's usually eight rakah that they'll pray, yeah. but throughout those rakah, the chapters are long chapters and they read all the way to finish the whole part. Um, yeah, the some days is longer, in 30 parts, right? Yeah, and section. that goes with a part each night of Ramadan, and so that's 30 nights of Ramadan. It starts the night prior to our fasting. You know, everything's done by the lunar cycle, right? We, we go by the lunar. So if Sunday. Ramadan, if we're fasting Monday, they start for a week Sunday, Sunday night yeah. after, after Isha. And just like Eid, we sight the moon. If it's Friday, we sight it Thursday night. And they start takbirat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Yeah, we need Miriam for the very yeah, new Muslims. We need, and a lot of you guys know the ropes in this room for the most part. Yes. But we need uh, we need one class on just a crash course in Ramadan and fasting. We will one be class. We I don't think we need to do it on Sunday evening. morning because most of you guys know the drill. But well, we, we do. We will do it. Maybe and after that way we can be recorded as well. Yeah. And we will oh, do it good. because I'm telling you, I learn something new every time that's I do true. that lesson. I forget we're recording. Every <laughs> time I give that lesson, I learn new things. <laughs> yeah. I remember so, you saying. I remember you saying you were going to do that. A few yes. Months back when it first came up here. Yes. I was yeah. Right. And so that's going to go to a different. Right, I'm yeah. going to try to bring a doctor who can talk about how to adjust your medications if you have to take medications throughout the day or whatever. I'm going to also be asking yeah. fifth. Uh, a sheikh to ask so that you can ask specific questions on the jurisprudence of ins and outs of, of fasting as well. Like uh, Some people something may come up that I've never fast. even thought of, but it's your situation and you need to know. You know, um, one one of the one of my students was 
all the way through Ramadan. We get to the like the last ten days, and they were talking about it's been so hard not to chew gum in a day. And, and the guy, listen, you can't chew gum. He's been chewing gum all oh, Ramadan, oh, you know, God. all day long, you know. <laughs> That's what we you can't chew gum. Yeah. <laughs> so these types of things come up that nobody thinks to ask about because. Do you know we get a phone call? Do you know we get a phone call every year about every year the first morning we're supposed to be fasting? One of us will get a phone call about four o'clock in the morning going, Do I stop eating at the first time on the calendar or that second time when the sun comes up? Which one is it? Because there's two times. Somebody one time. Every water all day long. That they have eaten that they have eaten and that my fast is on because I made a mistake of eating now, I had to start this. But they didn't realize that yeah. it was an accident yeah. and it's forgiven right. and <laughs> Allah forgives that it's a gift actually when you forget your exactly. fasting it's my favorite um, thing in you know, school and you say you come to me you can do your fast it's, it's my favorite thing in school to see the students do that and don't take that away from that person yes. and I love to teach the students that because they'll be behind somebody who after PE goes to the water fountain and they're all behind them giving them like when are they going to realize it when are they going to realize it and then they all it's just lovely I love that about yeah. the kids and yeah. subhanAllah you, you, you're thankful for the gift and you can Continue does anybody not have this book? Anybody not have this book? We all good? Mm -hmm. yeah. Brother Charles, do you have this book? Yes, ma'am. You get okay. it. You get I think it. I have some other ones, but I want to be saying. Thank you, Lord. 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 Th